So for 2020, I was assessing uh, some of my goals and wants and desires, and I had this assessment moment that I have too many hobbies. I'm into too many things, and if you have six different things that you do for work or interest, I don't know that you can get better at the same rate at each and every one of them. So my challenge for 2020 for myself was to pick a few things and do those well. So in other words, do less. Do less will actually have you doing better. So for me, one of the things that I have done, and it's been fun, and I've enjoyed it, but it's not the best use of my time as I've assessed what my future goals are, as it doesn't line up with my future goals, is that of furniture building, woodworking, carpentry. And so this is going to be my last two projects, and these are ones that are already in play and in plan from last year. We've been building a house over the last two years, and the two pieces of furniture, the two tables more specifically, are what I'm setting out to build. Pick up the material for. I'm excited because I love it. There's people who do it better. I just enjoy it. Oftentimes I enjoy finding reclaimed wood or wood that's been abandoned or old and just sanding it and then staining it and bringing it back to life and giving it a purpose. But with some of the things I have in mind for 2020 for bigger things, these will be my last two projects, I think. But at least uh, these are the last two for my house for our personal. So I'm excited to go ahead today, pick up some supplies, pick up some material, show you how to build a farmhouse table as well as kind of a, a farmhouse table but it's gonna have a round top. It's a little quirky, but we're gonna go hit the lumber store right now, some of my favorite places. First, we're gonna start with some four by four by eight foot Douglas fir. Uh, this is going to be kind of for your wide pieces of wood for the structural part of the legs of the table. So we're going to grab uh, four of these. Another thing important when picking out lumber is finding uh, square lumber or straight lumber. So you look down the edge of the board, if it looks straight, you don't see any dips or curves, you know it's good wood. So this is going to be my top of my table, which I laid out. These are our 2 by 12 by 8 feet. So you can lay them out and you can check for the gaps to be nice and tight. So you can see for curves, and that's gonna be a top for my eight foot table. So I've been to the lumber yard and been to the, I think I went to Home Depot this time around, but Lowe's is actually closer to my house. So we got the wood ready to build these tables, at least the table bases. I'm gonna get started on these table bases, build the foundation, and then build the top separately and uh, take you for uh, the process in the last tables. Hopefully I'll be building for a long time. Although there is one more, it's called a workbench that I'm eventually gonna have to do as well. But let's get home and unload this wood. Then you want to lay these out next to each other with the bottom of the table showing so those less desirable pieces or knots or markings you want on the bottom side so that when we attach it and draw our circle um, it's all pulls together and we're going to use our craig jig to make the pocket holes that joins these together stage when we've done our pocket holes and everything's laid out perfectly you want to go ahead and get your cordless drill and some screws you can buy Craig screws and as I learned they're actually more expensive than just getting some regular two and a half inch Phillips screws and that's what I'm gonna use right now they go in nice and quick it'll pull everything together then we've got a solid tabletop and ready to go to the next step So now that we got this base all attached, we're gonna set this thing up on some sawhorses, trace out our circle for the top and get a jigsaw and trim this thing into a round top table. So 
so I traced out my top and now I'm gonna go ahead and get a little um, little jigsaw like this and, and trim around the edges and I should get this round top out of this shortly. This is kind of a tedious piece because this little blade on two inch wood, if you have a fresh blade, throw it on there and it'll make your life a little easier. Well, that's the most difficult or at least annoying part of this job. And now we're gonna, um, we can come back to sanding this and getting it looking super sharp. But what I'm gonna do is start to f set up uh, the base of this table, which is also an intricate doing. Um, but we've got our shape. We'll come back with the sander and really, really, really have to heavy sand this and hone it in. But we're gonna start building a base right now to see this thing really come together. For that, I've got a six by six center that's gonna be great once we get some two by sixes framed out in the next. So let's do that. Got a two by six cross section here, and I'm just coming off basically an inch and a half. Give me 18 inches. There you have it. We have got our six by six base. And then we are going to work on the opposite sides of that, then our cross beams with four by fours. Okay, so at this part in the process, we've got the top made and the base made. And we're gonna to begin to sand down all the edges of this thing and sand down the top from a heavy grade to a medium to a really fine grade, just to, before we stain it and seal it, you want it to be as smooth as possible. So we're gonna put in some work on this right now, really hone this thing in. So at this point in the stage of the table, we have sanded down this top um, to it's nice and fine and we're going to go ahead and apply some of the stain. Now with stain, I always recommend using some gloves for protection and a little sponge like this and keep a rag ready for wiping off the excess um, stain. Well, that's a look at the table in its new space and it's completed. I did a coat of lacquer on the top so I can set a coffee cup down. And if it happens to have a ring, you can wipe it off and it's not gonna stain the table. The table is great, it has its imperfections. We have this strategically hiding this place that I stained several times and it's just a lighter spot. But that's the cool thing about working with wood. It's imperfections is actually what makes it beautiful. I think we could use that in our life as well. Imperfections is what makes it beautiful. The contrast, the colors, everything. So anyways, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, this table, I stained a dark walnut, which also matches my front door, which also matches the mantle that I built, and it will match the eight foot farm table, farmhouse table that I still need to finish up because we, uh, we have no dining room table, but I'll get working on that. Did not bother to film it, but maybe I'll snip it in and edit it some future piece. Um, so yeah, enjoy your coffee, enjoy your morning, and you know, if you do like me, I've got puppies over here. I'll grab a puppy, and here's a puppy. This is, I don't know if this is a boy or a girl, we have three. This guy right here is our little puppy, Roxy's puppy. It's a, it's a mister. We'll call him Mr. Cute. All right, sweet puppy. Say hello to everybody. They're sweet. Mmm. 
You want some coffee? You gonna pee on the table? This is my little buddy. We got uh, five of these little guys. What's better than coffee and puppies in the morning? Nothing better than that. All right, buddy. I'll put you back with your family.